Hey everyone, um, I'm grateful to be here and continue to have the support of the community. Mike and I are here to interview um, Carlos Moresco and Jake George of Farmhouse um, Hemp. And so over the past few uh, months, we've been getting to know these guys and we love some of the products I have with me. Uh, one of the lavender and lemongrass um, CBD um, balm or salve. I know me and Mike been using their, uh, their lip um, stick about chapstick, right? For the past couple of months, yeah. I, kind of, I kind of love it. I love different flavors. And um, we've been, uh, one of the things I really love about um, being in the industry is different products. And so we have some of the rosin press that they, they do right here. It's pretty cool. And so um, we're excited to just talk to both of these guys here to um, let you know um, who they are, um, a little bit more about the farm and what they got going on so that um, you guys can go out and support them, especially when uh, harvest season comes. So, and with that said, um, thank you, Jake and Crosby for being here. Can you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Sure. Thank you, Bevan. Thanks for having us on and uh, being able to share with you guys in the community a little bit about Farmhouse. Uh, my name's Crosby Moresco. I'm one of the co-founders and owners of Farmhouse Hemp. Uh, we started this company in 2016 uh, with really one big thing in mind. Uh, all of our, all the owners, uh, Lucas and Kelsey, were all big cannabis advocates. But one thing that we noticed uh, in the cannabis industry was a huge lack of education and transparency, mm -hmm. and really trying to, you know, piece all together the big pictures of this industry and how do we get to an end product. So with that being said, Farmhouse, you know, saw a lot what was going on out there. We saw a lot of, um, you know, extraction companies, a lot of CBD companies using solvents, chemicals. Um, anywhere from butane, hexane, pentane, uh, and then a lot of the, you know, the more conscious ones using, you know, CO2 and ethanol. Um, and Farmhouse Hemp really tried to find a way to do something different. Um, and the biggest thing we did was is we started with seed to sale. We wanted to do everything ourselves. We wanted to have full control um, of, you know, sourcing the materials, what kind of raw ingredients we wanted, what kind of, uh, you know, making sure everything was organic. And another big important thing to our vertical integration was our extraction and how we um, decided to extract our CBD from the hemp. Uh, and that's where we landed on the technique called rosin tech, which is, um, it's not new in the cannabis industry, but it's definitely new and unique on the CBD side of things and the hemp side of things. Um, and just for the people out there who aren't familiar with the term rosin, what this is, is it's a extraction method using just low heat and pressure, as opposed to using uh, hydrocarbons or other types of solvents or chemicals. Um, the big difference in, to make it really easy is it's mechanical separation versus chemical separation. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the big reasons why we wanted to do this is when we think of CBD and hemp, we think of a wellness product. Uh, something that we're going to want to put in our bodies or put on our bodies every day. So when I think of doing something every day, I want to make sure that that product is as natural and as close to mother nature as possible. So using low heat and pressure, we're really able to A, take away all the, you know, the nasty chemicals and solvents, but also in doing so, we're ha we have great retention on our cannabinoids, on our terpenes, on our fatty acids, the essential vitamins, even some of the chlorophyll um, comes through. And, you know, even, you know, for a long time, we've thinking, you know, we've wanted to remove the chlorophyll from, you know, dabs and rosin and things. But what we find is chlorophyll actually brings uh, oxygen to red blood cells, you know, so mother nature has this in there for a reason. And uh, we, as farmhouse, we felt, why would we, want to mess with mother nature we wanted to keep our extract and our products as close to mother nature as possible so that's really where farmhouse hemp stems you know we saw a lot of um things in the industry that you know didn't match up with our values and, and how we view a wellness product and also just this idea of wanting to do it all ourselves and keep the control so with quality and wanting to keep the control that's kind of how farmhouse hemp was started um, saw some gaps in the industry, knew that we could fill those gaps and also bring a brand and a company to the community where we were an open door. From testing to full traceability, you have a question or you want to know where something's from, we're going to 
give you the information and we're going to make it very easy for you to get the information. So that's a little bit about Farmhouse Hemp in a nutshell. Uh, we're from Colorado. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we are a small company out of Colorado. Um, this is where we grow in Colorado. We extract in Colorado. We bottle, formulate, and we also have a farm in Wisconsin. And that's really just to try to get a little bit of diversity uh, with our hemp. Um, God forbid if we have a really bad hailstorm here in Colorado and our, you know, our crop unfortunately would get ruined, we would have a backup in Wisconsin. So that's a little bit of the reasoning for wanting to um, diversify where we grow our hemp. Um, and also just to mess around and see what different environments, different soils and like that, um, how that affects our, our crop. So. Um, with that said, I'd love to answer any questions that you guys have and, and really go through the process of, you know, how we grow, how we extract, and, and what makes farmhouse hemp so unique. So thanks for giving us the vote. Oh, Crosby, uh, this is Mike. I had a quick question. You were talking about the soil and the planting and stuff. I was reading on your website something that most people probably aren't too familiar with, but um, for growing, as far as it says you're 100% organic farm, but can you talk a little bit more about what fish emulsion is? Because a lot of people have no idea what that is, and it's a pretty unique concept. Absolutely, yeah. So we we actually do make our own compost tea, and that's another term you'll hear. Um, and really what it is is it's, it's fish guts and, and fish parts, which really help fertilize the soil and the plants. So... Um, it's a little bit of a stinky process, but it's very safe. It's very natural, um, and it provides a great nutrients without really getting into too many uh, synthetic inputs or fertilizers. So nice. uh, the emulsion is really it's a it's a natural product. It's very available to the everyday farmer. Um, this is not something that's hard to get if uh, other farmers wanted to use this. Um, and what's cool is it's really easy to use. And what we do is we have something called a dosatron. Uh, we use drip tape. And you can actually put the fish emulsion or the compost tea into the dosatron and it actually, just like you would be watering, it, it goes right into it and it goes to every plant. So it's also very efficient um, and, you know, time, it's, um, it's easy, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Yeah, yeah um, that's different. Um, I've never, I've well, I'm not never, may have heard it once or twice, but this is the first I've seen um, of um, a farm doing that. So you think that's going to be the norm going forward is trying to find more organic ways of at least natural as possible compared to using like heavy pesticides? I hope so. You know, I think as more and more, you know, um, places like CBD reviews and other organizations bring out more education on, you know, what types of inputs are involved in making organic CBD hemp uh, and growing it. I think it's going to become more um, of a popular option, especially when I think the demand for organic is going to increase. Um, so I think the more education that we get out there and the more we can let people know that we can grow very high quality hemp using completely organic inputs, I think the demand is going to go really up. So um, I'm seeing, you know, I'm the, from the testing that we're getting, you know, we're growing really high quality you know, high terpene, high cannabinoid hemp, and we're using 100% organic inputs. Um, water, color, sun, and emulsion. It's really simple, and it's also very effective. So, yeah, I, I, I hope it's popular. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to ask you quick, too. I noticed on all your packaging on your products, like with your lip balm, for example, which is an amazing product, um, you use, like, a, a cardboard tube versus using a plastic, you know, Tube, you're not going to be able to recycle for the most part on those uh, that they use on like other lip balms and chapsticks. Um, is that one of the, I guess, thought factors that went into your packaging was as far as like environmental type stuff? Because it seems like everything you're doing is almost like a zero waste type of company. I mean, probably not completely zero waste, but very, very close, you know? Mike, thanks for bringing that up. It's, it's, it's a huge value to us. And one of the reasons why we started Farmhouse was, uh, Unfortunately, you know, as much as I love the cannabis industry, um, specifically with packaging, it's a very uh, unsustainable industry right now. Um, there are some great companies coming in line, you know, with hemp plastics and things like that. But um, right now it's still very early. So Farmhouse Hemp was uh, very intentional in how we packaged our products. Uh, you will not see uh, a lot of single use plastic from us. 
we're going to be using, like you said, glass or uh, with our lip balms, uh, some paper tube. And what that allows us to do is become a biodegradable packaging and to make our uh, carbon footprint a little less. So we definitely try to make all of our packaging as sustainable as possible. Um, it's a huge uh, importance to us, and I'd like it to become more of an importance to our industry as a whole. Um, and just to, you know, to bring up a great company that's doing awesome things is Sauna Packaging. Uh, they're coming out with awesome hemp plastics mm -hmm. as well as uh, recycled ocean plastics. So, uh, you know, finding other ways to reuse some of the, the nasty plastic that's in our oceans and making them uh, high quality uh, packaging for the cannabis industry. So um, I definitely have uh, hope uh, and faith in the cannabis industry to turn this around. Um, but it starts with, you know, the big companies and the small companies. You know, this is going to be a collective effort if we all want to make this industry more sustainable. It's, it can't just be uh, the small guys. It's got to be the big guys and the guys in between. So um, we're going to do our part and we're always going to do it. Even I, I have to say that little uh, paper tube is pretty expensive, but um, you know, to us, it's the least we can do to make a uh, sustainable package. Oh, yeah. we, we, appre we appreciate that. And so does mother earth. So thank you guys. Yeah, I love it. Um, so I can say that um, for those of you who come a little curious about the rosin. So I've had an opportunity when I was in LA um, last year to actually try these and I got to vape it. And so you can really taste the flavor, the chlorophyll. It's, it's so much better from, from my experience than just doing like a distillate or um, an isolate by itself. So uh, you, gotta, you have to try if you've never tried it. Um, rosin is really well. So a question I have is, is your process longer or shorter compared to other extraction methods? Great question. Um, we, it, is, it takes a lot longer and it is definitely more labor intensive. Um, you know, with some of the uh, CO2 extraction systems and closed loop extraction systems, you have these big chambers where you're able to process a lot of pounds uh, in a day. I'll tell you right now, with our extraction system, we're pressing about 60 grams of hemp at a time. So if you can imagine, I mean, just to keep up the demand with our people, you know, we're squishing a lot of 60 grams at a time. And uh, it's just a small machine. We have a guy on it. It's all manpower. Um, but we believe in that, you know, extracting at small amounts of time, what we're able to do is we're really able to pay attention to the, the quality of the extract. Um, and have really hands-on eyes on it and seeing, you know, what's this doing compared to the last uh, press we did? You know, humidity, moisture, uh, all those things play a role. And because we press at such small amounts, we're really able to take all those variables into check and make the best abstract possible. So I think that's actually one of the reasons why rosin um, is not as popular uh, in CB in the CBD industry, as you know, I would hope um, it's because it's labor intensive. It you're not getting the yields that you would potentially get from, say, a chemical separation. So us doing mechanical, you know, our yields are definitely not as as um, effective. But I think we're okay with that because I believe that our our CBD extract has a lot more efficacy to it. There's a lot more um, things in there that Mother Nature provided that provide a really well-rounded uh, medicine. So um, I'm okay with the harder work. I'm okay with it being more expensive because I believe that the end product and the end result is worth, the, I'll say it, the juice is worth the squeeze. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we truly believe that. No, I had a quick question. We, when we spoke, not earlier today, but I think last month, we talked about um, with your pet tinctures or your pet oils, there was a kind of like almost a repurposing of the, the uh, plant material so it didn't go to waste. Can you go a little bit into to that? Absolutely. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. It, and that um, kind of plays into our sustainability uh, value and wanting to be as as wasteful free as possible and one thing we found was is when we press our hemp uh, under heat and pressure um, as you uh, Bevan you were showing it, we what you get is this what we call a rosin chip um, and essentially what that is is it's the hemp that's been 
put under a ton of pressure and looks like a chip. And what we did is we actually sent that into botanical laboratories down in Denver. And we wanted to test that chip and see, okay, how much CBD is left in this chip? Is this useful? You know, should we just be composting this or should we be potentially further extracting the CBD to make an additional product? Um, and that's where we tested it and we learned that there's about three to 4% CBD left in there. Um, and of course we were like, well, let's, let's get it all out. Let's use all the CBD we can. And that's where we found if we grind those chips up and we put, put it into a, it's essentially, it's a pressure cooker. So it's, we're just extracting further using heat and steam. So continuing our solventless, um, no chemical process, but we're able to further extract the CBD out of those chips, um, and the reason we make the dogs uh, pets or the dog drops with those is because they're even more planty tasting because it's coming from the chip, but it's still packed with cannabinoids. It's still packed with some terpenes and chlorophyll and still all those beneficial things. So it's just a way to continue making a product without being wasteful. And then the cool thing is, is once we grind it up and you're kind of left with a mash almost, and that is 100% compostable. It's not hazardous, and it's, it's great for the, uh, the soil. So we, at the end, we're still left with a 100% compostable and biodegradable waste. I was going to comment real quick that um, we've tried about probably 15 different tinctures with our, with our pets. And uh, yours is one that they kind of they immediately took to. So I think it has a lot to do with probably the whole natural process, you know, the the DNA and the dog, they know that it's all natural. They're not smelling synthetic chemicals or I, I just want to comment that that was like the only one they've ever just immediately taken to. So just so the viewers know it, it it's worth, you know, a shot with your pets. If they're being finicky about other brands or this or that, give, give them a shot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. One thing we like to say about our pet drops is, you know, at the end of the day, they, they taste like beef and grass, which, um, is really the creme de la creme of canine cuisine. There is nothing that a dog wants to eat more than beef and grass. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want to have some fun, right? I, I'm so curious now. So um, I know you send this out. So are we special because we got this? And so do you like send this out to others? Uh, are people actually for this? And if so, can I like um, light this up, like grind it up and, and like smoke it or vape it? Or can I like add it to my food and like, you know, and is there any way like, I can, is there a benefit of using this? Like what's, what's left over here? So, you know, as it is just in that chip form, there's not too much you can do with it. We have a ton of customers asking about them, wanting to use them as coasters, think they would be good as shingles on a roof or building <laughs> material. So we definitely, have messed around we've joked about you know what else can we use these chips for because they're really cool um but in their you know in their current state i don't know if you would want to roll that up or vape it just because i think in my opinion most of those terpenes have been extracted on that first press we've done so you know i'd like to think that we've gotten most of the you know the essential good stuff out of it um on that first press um so I don't know if I'd recommend to try. I mean, you can certainly try it. There's been no chemicals on it. It's completely safe, but the taste might be a little off there. So. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Do you think you could repurpose that possibly for agriculture use to put into like cattle feed and things like that to provide the leftover nutrients or possibly like a fiber? Have you guys thought about that route at all? Or Absolutely. And we've actually tested this on oh, cool. you know, chickens. Um, my partner's sister has chickens, so we've fed it to chickens and they seem to love it. Um, so we think there's total um, options to potentially make this into a, uh, a livestock feed, but there's a lot of red tape there, um, specifically with the Department of Ag um, and what you can feed livestock. So there's still a little bit of red tape there. Um, it's definitely not approved right now. It is not allowed to go into agricultural feed um, at this point in time, but I know that is something that is being um, talked about and something that... Uh, is very farmers ranchers there's a lot of interest here with that um 
especially trying to get their, you know, their animals off grain and onto something a little more healthy and more sustainable um, to grow and to eat. So there's a lot of potential here and is definitely being talked about in the industry and with farmhouse. Right. Hopefully that goes through because if we think about it, the grain we're feeding to cattle and stuff like that, a lot of it's genetically modified and Absolutely. a lot less safe than a pure hemp chip. So crazy to me, but we all know it's, um, it's a game as of right now. So. Absolutely. So, oh, so you, right up, um, I'm curious then. So is it a, oh, I'm just, I'm not sure if you know, but is it possible that we can use this maybe in like hempcrete or some kind of building material since it's a lot going to be left over, and I, I can see how this can be, you know, like added use. It's, it's like a, a bonus, right, after the fact. So any thoughts on that, like using this in, like, you know, um, insulation or, like, hempcrete? There's been thoughts about it, and, and that's where I think my knowledge and experience starts to dwindle a little bit. I don't have that much knowledge on hempcrete except for that I'm very interested in it and want it to um, become less expensive, and I want more people to start growing you know, hemp for fiber and for textiles and building materials. But I would love to send some of those rosin chips to, uh, you know, a hempcrete builder and just see if they can make something of this or find uh, it to be, you know, a reinforcement or more useful in any way. So um, I think it's a great thing to look into. And I think we should definitely be sending some of these rosin chips to some hempcrete and see if, uh, see what they can do with it. I'm curious. I had one quick question off the chip topic, but um, the honey, you guys make uh, infused honey that's really good. I was curious if you could tell us maybe the process on that, maybe where you get the honey from, that kind of stuff, because it's not just like those $1 honey sticks you see at all the CBD stores and conventions that you don't know where it's from. Like, it, it's a really high quality honey. Um, I think it's a really unique product people could use in the mornings to get their CBD in and enjoy the taste of it. So is there just a, like a brief overview of the process for the... Uh, Honey? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll start uh, where the honey comes from. It comes from five minutes uh, down from the, our farm. Uh, we try to keep it as local as possible. We really believe with Farmhouse that we want to support our, um, our local vendors here as much as possible and keep it sustainable and keep it within our community. And uh, we have a, uh, a store called Capoco's Honey where we source all of our honey. And we call it a SAS, which is sage, alfalfa, and sunflower. So it's all wildflower pollen, um, great for allergies. And, and what's cool is a lot of this flora is not just found in Colorado, but it's, uh, it's flora that's found a lot in the United States. So while it might be a little more beneficial just because it's the local flora for Colorado, it's still going to be very beneficial as a raw honey for everyone across the United States. So that's where our honey comes from. And one of the main reasons why we wanted to use honey, and we thought honey was a great uh, – vessel or carrier was its approachableness or, or its approachability um, from all demographics from old to young and we wanted someone to be able to try cbd potentially not just to smoke it or you know if they were intimidated by cannabis in general you know what's a way that we could get them to try cbd in a, in a way that's very comfortable for them and one of the reasons we thought is honey you know putting it in tea putting it in your coffee putting it on toast in the morning. We just felt that it was a very um, approachable ingredient for to infuse. Um, and then, you know, just the, the health benefits of honey in itself was also um, intentional. And we thought that honey was just a well, a well-rounded ingredient. Um, but it's local honey from Colorado and um, it's 20 milligrams per teaspoon. So it's pretty concentrated. So you don't need you know, one of the, our biggest concerns, we didn't want people to have to use a ton of honey to, you know, we didn't want the, their drink or their food to be too sweet. So we thought that 20 milligrams per teaspoon was a, was a great dose um, where it wouldn't overpower someone's drink, but it would also get them a, a good amount of CBD. I was just going to comment. I've used it in like green tea and hot beverages and you put a teaspoon in it. Um, I guess it word would be like the dissolvability it mixes just so the viewers know um it, it mixes very well it doesn't flow to the top it, it actually melts right down with the heat and it's uh it adds a beneficial taste and a beneficial health benefit and all kinds of stuff so it works awesome in hot beverages i mean it works great for toast everything else i've used but i've noticed compared to some honeys that are just they don't use the best quality honey and it will kind of spoil the taste of your drink this thing 
enhances the flavor and it, it dissolves perfect. So you're going to get all of that CBD out of there. It's not going to be sticking to the sides or this or that. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I love I love the honey. I use it. I still have a little bit left, so I'm just babying it. But one of the things <laughs> that um, could, the people who know me knows I'm um, I'm Mr. Compliance, right? <laughs> so I one thing I love about what, what you guys are doing is the fact that you guys have your, your batch uh, ID in the bottom of your, um, your bottles. That right there, um, not too many companies I see in the industry actually are uh, taking that kind of um, care to you know to um, make sure people understand. Um, part of where it's come from you know the chicken lab report so i really you know like just want to say you know i'm really inspired that you guys are including the batch codes on your um, your products thank you yeah you know when we started farmhouse that was uh that was a big, big gap that we saw was that trans transparency and uh being forthright with your customers and one thing we wanted the customers to know every time was is what exactly is going in their body so we will not have a product leave our office or our lab without having a test result on it. That is hands down one of the most important things that Farmhouse Hemp will always do. It's give you the information and let you know exactly what you're putting in your body and let you make the educated decision as the consumer whether this is right or not right for you. I believe that is a right that every consumer should have is the, is the information to make an educated decision on what's right for them. Very Yeah. So, oh. um, go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was just gonna comment just on your website quick. We were talking. I wanted. I know you guys make all the CBD products, but I was just scrolling through to look for what you know the users would see in this and that. And you guys have some really kick-ass shirts. It's really um, it's unique. It looks like a nice cotton. So you guys, besides CBD, I would recommend checking out their uh, their clothing selection. It looks it looks really nice. A lot of companies don't put out that aspect, but I mean, this is something you could wear everywhere. And I just I just haven't seen a lot of companies. You know, have their own logo and, and quality shirt. A lot of them use like a nine dollar or ninety nine cent shirt and some horrible screen printing. But this stuff it looks really cool. So you guys are kind of, you know, growing as a brand and evolving into like a full branded thing, not just that, but you know, the clothing and stuff. So that's really neat to see expanding kind of into that and sharing with the customers. So thank you. Yeah, I think that's one thing that Farmhouse Hemp's trying to do is not just become a, a CBD hemp company, but become a lifestyle, become a place where someone can come for education, uh, for just additional knowledge. You know, we want to be more than just um, L&C BD. You know, we want to be there for the community and there for our customers in, in more ways than just. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, and just last thing for me, but I just want to comment. You have your, um, the name of the, the salve is the one with the cayenne. Is there, uh, what is the name of that one? I don't have it in front of me. But yes, I wanted to comment that I gave that to a doctor, um, a retired doctor from the Mayo Clinic, but it's really bad neuropathy to rub on his feet for the, and we won't make, well, I can make medical claims, I guess, but he, uh, <laughs> he, he rubbed it on his feet. He has horrible, horrible, horrible neuropathy, like some of the worst you've seen. And that stuff right there, almost every single time helped him out tremendously. So if you guys, in my opinion, suffering from neuropathy or some kind of nerve ending or pain, that salve they make has been found to be better than a lot of pharmaceuticals that he's used. So I just want to uh, tell you guys thank you from him for uh, producing that product. Thank you. And that's called the recovery salve. And that's the cayenne okay. eucalyptus. So thank you so much. That's uh, those That right there makes it all worth it for us. You know, all the hard work, all the rosin and manual labor, we do it for those, those types of... Uh, that feedback. So thank you for letting us know. Keep uh -huh. this going. Yeah. So I only have two more questions. So one of them is more curiosity. Like how did you get to have the coconut on your logo? I'm just curious. So that's a great story and I'm glad you asked because I don't think it gets a lot of attention. And um, my partner, uh, Lucas Erickson's aunt, actually hand draws all of our logos and um, then we kind of fill it in, uh, you know, she sends us, you know, it's hand drawn on paper and then we kind of fill it in on the, uh, the digital side, but it means a lot to us to keep things, you know, in the family, keep, you know, give people the chance to show us, you know, their cool artistic work and how we can implement it in our company. And, um, you know, she, she does the bee, she did the coconut, she really helped us create our brand the fact that it was a family member means a lot to us. And, uh, you know, I've personally been to her studio and she really cares about making, um, 
you know, our brand as special as can be. So thanks for bringing that up. It means a lot. And so that's how we got those logos is my partner's uh, aunt draw, and draws all of it. Nice. Yeah. And so the last question I have is, um, it's kind of a two part. Um, so no um, pandemic right now and you guys are small batch. Are you glad in some kind of way, this is more for like the business people who are watching. Are you kind of glad that the small batch that you guys do is able to have you maintain more, um, easier now and not struggle as hard during the pandemic compared to somebody who may, um, company that has larger um, you know, um, products and you know they push up more products than you guys. And then also like, how are you guys doing you know, with everything going on right now? Great question. And you know, um, I'm feeling very grateful that I'm able to keep our employees working you know, everyone at Farmhouse doing, making the donuts. And so I feel very grateful that we're able to do that. Um, and I'm very blessed with, you know, our approach as for Farmhouse to slowly and grow organically. You know, we didn't take uh, investment. We didn't take large amounts of money and, you know, try to be this large company that we weren't. Um, we, we bootstrapped this from the beginning. You know, this all started in 2016 with us investing, you know, $1,500 each. Uh, and we just slowly worked our way up with knowing, you know, keeping our head in our lanes and knowing that all we're going to do is make a really high quality product and let the people try it. And, you know, if, if we've done something right, they're going to come back. So having that mentality and just not chasing the shiny pen and not going after, you know, the hand sanitizers, the other, you know, the, these big things that companies think they can get rich quick on, we've really tried to just stay in our lane and continue doing what we think is right. And that's that strategy has really helped us, you know, pandemic and without the pandemic. Um, and what we found is during the pandemic, we were able, because we're small, to adapt very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what went from a lot of wholesale orders and mom and pop shops to a lot of direct to e-commerce and uh, as a small company, we were able to make that shift very quickly and, and get everyone on board. So I'm pretty grateful with, you know, our small batch and how we were able to adapt and how we were able to keep, you know, all our employees and all our, you know, staff employed and continuing to make um, the products for people. So very fortunate. You know, I, I'm i very aware that, you know, it could get bad and, you know, farmhouse could, could take a hit, but um, – having the confidence that we're able to adapt and be flexible and, and to work with some strange times is, is reassuring. So um, feeling grateful very much. So. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, you have last thoughts, Mike? Yeah. I just, yeah. I just had a, a one last thought. I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of that for Crosby slow and steady wins the race. You have time to do things the right way. I just wanted to compliment you guys on being, you know, ecologically friendly, evolving into a lifestyle brand, doing things the right way, caring about people, like just being genuinely good people in the company. And you don't see that that much in today's day and age in the Hamper CBD companies. They want to grow fast. How much money can we make? What can we do? You know, your, your advertising, I've been watching over the past couple of months. It's evolving. It, it's getting, you know, a lot. It's just evolving. It, it, it looks really nice now. Like everything you're doing, you're doing at the right pace, in my opinion. You're not trying to rush things. You're not trying to you know, push things on people. It's just, I'm just, I'm just really highly impressed. I just want to say thank you for being one of those companies that um, people can feel confident in. So. And, and right back at you. Thank you for providing your platform and providing companies like us to have a voice and to, you know, let the community, you know, that we're here and that we're here to help them. And, you know, that would be a lot harder if we didn't have uh, organizations and people like you and Bevan who helped us, with that platform and help us talk to the community and make it easier. So right back at you. Thank you for providing a, what I feel is very important in this industry. And that is community and open and honest conversations. So that's that's right. The key word there, community working together because we're all in this, the people that are doing it the right way are in it to help people. Sure. Everybody has to make a living, but we're here for the betterment of, you know, people, the earth, everything. So it, it's really awesome when you say that. So I think teamwork is as cheesy as it is. Teamwork makes the dream work, you know, so. True, it's true. It's true. So lastly, the um, last word for you, Cosby, can you tell people where they can find you, how they can reach you, 
Um, I really appreciate the interview. Absolutely. Thank you. And again, we're Farmhouse. We're out of Collins, Colorado. And you can visit us on our website at www.farmhousehemp.com. Check out our Instagram, our Facebook. We're kind of all out there on the social media platforms, and it's Farmhouse Hemp. And thank you guys so much for listening and uh, tuning in. Really appreciate your time.